Hey guys, welcome back. This is part number five of my F-14A build. So this part, we're going to look at the ordnance and the pylons and all the missiles and stuff. And also we're going to get the resin injection seats and start painting those guys up too. So let's go ahead and get started. Hey guys, welcome back to part number five, I think we're up to now on this F-14 build. So today we're going to focus on the weapons, so the ordnance, the pylons, and the fuel tanks. Um, so I kind of like to do this a little bit kind of early in the build, I don't like to do it at the very end because by that time I kind of want to move on to my next project and I kind of rush through it. So I do like to do all this stuff kind of a little bit earlier because it does take quite a lot of time. So as you see here, I do have a Brazin big synth set which contains the Sparrow, the Phoenix, and the Sidewinders in resin. This is the kit part. Now, the kit parts are perfectly fine. I mean, nice crisp molding. The only thing is the Phoenixes are in two parts, so you're going to have a seam to take care of. But, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily recommend going out and buying this. We'll look at them right now, but it's not. For the price, I don't think it's necessarily worth it. Um, so, let's take one of these guys out. So, this is a Phoenix. Don't get me wrong, they're nice, but they are um, not a huge improvement. But, you can see that. So, let me kind of hold up to the camera a little bit. Let's maybe zoom in. So, so there's your kit parts. And there's your resin one. So, it is a little bit more crisply molded. I'm um, obviously one part, no seams. So, the sparrow is quite nice. Um, it comes in two parts. You got the front and you got the rear, which goes on there. Um, so that's the Phoenix. And the Sidewinders on here. The kit part come in two parts up there and there, so you can have a slight seam. Now these are nice too. These are super thin, so my only concern is, you can see through it, um, if I can get these off the casting block without breaking them or splitting them, because they're so thin, it's like wafer thin, but there's your sidewinders, so you get four of each, you get four sidewinders, four phoenix and four uh, sparrows, so again I'm just a little nervous about cutting these off without breaking. So that's that that lot, um, and they come with the rails too. And then finally the sparrows, which are AIM seven E's. So again, four of these as well. You can buy them individually or the big sin pack. You actually get a little saving. So there it is. Um, again, real really thin. You can see how thin that is. I'm a little nervous about cutting these off again, but so you've got the main kind of assembly and then you got the, the um, forward kind of fins separately and compared to the kit part the kit parts one piece molded there's no seams um, but yeah it's I mean this scale it's not I and mean, we can't really see much difference in that one so the Phoenix is a nice um, sidewinders they're all nice stuff but again it's gonna take a lot of work to clean this up and I'm just a little nervous about getting this off the casting block about breaking all the fins and stuff so I'll give it a shot, um, see how they go. Um, if, it, if it all fails, we'll just go back and use the plastic ones. So um, each one comes with their own little instructions. Let me zoom back out a little bit. Uh, and there's a couple of bits of photo etch. But here's the kicker. Which somebody, I forgot your name, I'm sorry, but somebody left me a comment um, a week or two ago about this. But just look at this lot. <laughs> Three pages of decals. I think it's like 132 or something goes on there. I mean, it's ridiculous. If you're into your armor, if you're arc at, like ordnance and stuff, I mean, this is. T I mean, this is ridiculous amount of stuff here. Um, so there's one one piece for each of the um, types of missiles here. Um, but yeah, ridiculous amount of decals. Tiny, tiny as well. You see, gets my thing, my thumbnail there. How, exactly how small these guys are. Um, but they are legible. I think if you you can read. I'm not sure the camera's going to pick that up, but so that's it. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm actually going to start cleaning some of these up. I'll try one of each and just see how we go. If I can get these off the blocks, okay, and um, clean them up, and um, 
we'll come back and we'll make a decision if we're going to go with these ones or not, or go with the plastic ones. It depends how much pain in the ass the, um, the resin is going to be. So, all right, let me spend some time doing this. Um, also, the health and safety notice when dealing with resin, especially like lots of parts like this, always wear a respirator because the dust is um, toxic. It's, you know, it can get in your lungs. It's not good for you at all. So, to make sure you wear a respirator and dry sand and um, wipe away all the dust on your work area when using resin. If you're just cutting a little ejection seat or whatever, it's not a big deal. But when you're working through, you know, lots of different items like, and stuff like this, it's um, definitely worthwhile wearing that mask. All right, so let me get going on this and I'll be right back. Okay, you see a bunch of plastic on my um, bench and not much resin. So, yeah, going with plastic parts. Here's a problem with these guys. The fins are so thin, as I mentioned earlier, they just break off so easily. So when you got this on the bench and you try to cut it, any pressure, it just snaps them. So I snapped two in a row fins. One was completely destroyed. The other one probably could be glued back on. But at that point, I was like, nah, I'm not going to bother. So the other two, I, just did, I did take... Um, did take them out the um, sidewinder and the um, well sparrow. That was it. I did take them out of the box and I did clean them up and they, they seemed to be okay. But again, the fins were so thin. It's that kind of crispy, kind of brittle, kind of very ultra thin plastic. I just didn't want to risk it. So these go together really nice, as you can see. Um, no problems at all. In the kit and just shows you that again, you don't need to spend all this crazy money in aftermarket. So I didn't use the big sin cockpit set. You're not going to see the cockpit. Or any of that kind of stuff. I didn't use the, didn't use the weapons. So all I have used, I think, is the well, I used some seats, um, the the, uh, the gun vent panel and the, and the tail panel from Phase Hanger and the decals, and that's pretty much it. So it's out the box. So this is an expensive kit, but when you think about it, what you get, the quality you get in it, and the other weapons you get, and um, you get a mask set in it, it's not all that bad, really. I mean, so. If I buy any other kit, I'm going to spend ten dollars on a mask set from Edward. You got one in the box, maybe a some aftermarket here and there, but it just doesn't need anything on it. I mean, it's really good out of the box. So I went on, so all this stuff, all this aftermarket stuff, we just get for on eBay and resold for a lower price, I guess. But live and learn. So it just shows you, you know, it's probably best, you know, to look in a box and really kind of look at what you have your options before going out and buying aftermarket stuff. So yeah, they're okay, but again. It's just so hard to work with the resin. I mean, it's just so brittle and so tiny. It's just not, maybe 30 second scale might work, but when the kit ones are nice as it is, I mean, to me, it's perfect, so no problem at all. So, anyway, so that's over with. I built the two Phoenixes, I built a Sparrow, and I built a Sidewinder. I'm not going to load this one crazy, like fully loaded. I'm just going to, this is what I'm going to go with, just four, I think. So, two two Phoenixes underneath, and then on one pylon for the Sparrow, and one pylon for on the, um, the Sidewinder. Um, these are the two pylons I put together, Pr pretty straightforward too, following the instructions, and also the fuel tanks, again, pretty straightforward. Just note is they, they there's a left and a right, I'm not sure which one it is yet, but when you put it on the jet, you should be able to know it should face in a certain direction, I guess. Um, so that's it. Um, oh, one well, waffling ahead. Also, the sound isn't the best in last this, this video series. Um, I've been mean, used I had a problem with my new camera. So this is a new setup I'm filming with, and I'm using the actual camera mic. Um, because my normal mics aren't working because it has to be a powered one. So I actually ordered one on Amazon which arrives tomorrow. So by the time we roll into the next part, the, um, the audio should, should match the, the video quality hopefully too. So just a heads up on that one. So I know it's not the best audio quality, but at least the visual is better. So we're getting there step by step. Um, all right, going back to this anyway, I'm kind of waffling. So next part, next up for me, um, let me get these primed up, make sure the seams are all good. I think I took care of the seams pretty well. I don't see any but you never know. So I'm getting primed up, and then we'll get going on the painting, and then, as you've seen the instructions here, there's still tons of decals in the, in the kit um, with this. Not as many as the Edward set, but it's still a lot of decals to work on and stuff. Um, so we'll go ahead and work on getting all this stuff done, um, and I'll be right back. Okay, back for a quick update. So all the missiles are painted the white. I think it needs one more coat, probably. Um, I believe the Sidewinder is a gunmetal tip, and the Sparrow is a light gray. It says XF-19, like a sky gray um, front. So they're coming on nicely. Uh, it's never always that easy to paint white, so I think you just need one more coat and we should be good. Um, so that's done. Pylons, I have one more pylon off the camera, but the pylons are done, put together. So too are the fuel tanks, well, obviously prime, should I say, shadow coat, um, and the fuel, fuel tanks. So this is a really good, like, pre-shading, um, my usual shadow coat. To be honest with you, I next part, I'll kind of film it at the same time, so part number six next week, I actually go through the whole, paint the whole aircraft, so 
as I'm doing the same time as this. So I'll go for a detail how I do that shadow coat. So if you kept checking next week, I'm not gonna repeat myself. Um, I'll talk how to get, you know, the, the pre-shading kind of effect on these guys. Um, so yeah, so they're ready for the um, light gold gray. So on this scheme, even though the other side is white, the fuel tanks and the pylons are light gold gray um, from the reference pictures I've seen. So when I paint the aircraft light gold gray, I'll do it at the same time with the paints and the brush to save, you know, save a little bit of time there. But that's really it. So that's a quick little update where I'm at with ordnance. Uh, we'll go ahead and put another white coat on here and get these tips painted up and um, light gold gray on these. And we'll come back and um, talk about the next bit. So all my ordnance and my pylons and my fuel tanks are all painted. Um, not going super crazy with this like I did maybe the F-16. That was a 30 second scale one where I did a bunch of weathering and stuff. Pretty generic on this. I'm not going to say my, my jet is going to be more bit clean. It's not going to be totally kind of beaten up. So all more made. Missile paints exactly per the instructions. Um, XF-19 on the Phoenix and then the, um, I think you used gun metal for the end of the um, Sidewinder. I just remembered I've got to paint the tip as well, like a silver color. Um, so it's all done. Now I'm just going to come back and decals. There's tons of decals for these guys. The whole sheet is just for the weapons. Um, fortunately, we're not doing you know the full loadout. We're just doing a couple um, of missiles, so it won't be so much work. So all the instructions here, it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten decals for a sparrow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, about fifteen or so for a phoenix. So yeah, quite a lot of tiny little decals to go on. So I'm gonna go ahead and start working for all these. Um, basically ordnance just to treat like a baby model, same steps. So you're gonna prime, paint it, decal it, seal it, and then weather it. Same same step. So I'm gonna do follow those follow that same principle. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, get all these decaled up, clear coated, and then we'll get ready for um, weathering just the same way as we do the aircraft. So all the pylons and fuel tanks and uh, ordnance is all now decals decaled up, ready to go, and um, yeah, quite a lot of them. <laughs> um, yeah, took a long time. And those of you keen-eyed will know, I started decaling this, the the, um, the Phoenix missiles, I'm like, oh crap, I forgot to paint those. So fortunately I could decal the back of it, and then I mastered up and quickly paint the XF-19 in the front um, of the uh, the missiles, and then once that's dried, I could put the rest of the decals on, but just tons all over these guys. This one's not quite so bad. But yeah, these guys are. I'm going to only do two because these are ridiculous. I think I missed a couple off in the middle there. It's just there's so many. I mean, but yeah, straight out of the kit. So who'd known? So where I was spending my money on Brazil and Edward stuff, I mean, this stuff looks fantastic to me out of the box. So especially in 48 scale. If it's 30 second, maybe a different matter, but 48 scale, perfect. Um, all the look again, the decals are all on these guys. Which took quite a long time. So that's done. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna clear coat them probably with a gloss coat. Um, and then I'm gonna weather up the fuel tanks and the pylons. I've stopped doing um, weathering on the missiles because I, rather than like panel line washes and stuff, because they're always so clean, they're never dirty and grimy or anything. So rather than adding like Panel line detail and stuff. I'll just leave them as is. I think they kind of look better that way, to be honest with you. Especially all these decals all over them. So I'm gonna uh, well, I'll, I'll clear coat the, the missiles to get them kind of um, all sealed in and looking good, and then um, I'll just do the pylons and the, um, the fuel tanks, and then we'll come back and we'll start weathering them up to match the rest of the aircraft. So the missiles are on. As you can see, the four missiles missiles I created, um, built, should I say, and. Um, um, I've attached just, I don't know if it's a proper loadout or not, who cares, I mean, it's my model at the end of the day, I guess the scenario could be it's parked on the deck and in the middle of loading it up, so I'm not sure if they're going to be held like this, but I just kind of spread them out a little bit, um, to make it look good, I guess, visually appealing. So, one thing I did is I quickly weathered up the um, the fuel tanks, just super quickly with some neat oils, um, just a quick like two minute job, and used the Starship Filth Aptilon. Now, in parts, I think we're part seven or eight, I have a whole part about weathering where I weather, weather the whole jet and I, I'll talk about like 30 minutes, I'll talk about exactly how we do this. So if you kind of tune in a couple of weeks time or a week of time, I'm not sure exactly what the order of these, but you'll see um, how I kind of went about using oils, but super easy just kind of rubbing, you know, a few like bands around and it's gonna, this is just done, it's just gonna mellow out and look a lot better, just add a little bit of, you know, visual appeal to it. So that is essentially it. So the thing with the fuel tanks, um, also note the, um, 
as Tammy really well designed this, so you know which one's left and which one's right because um, they have different brackets, uh, the different tabs lengths on here. One's shorter and one's longer than the other. Um, also, just note too is um, you probably see I have this bit of foam which works great. So once I've kind of got a painting stage, I put on a bit of foam so I don't scratch it up and that kind of stuff. I'm just a bit of housekeeping there. Um, but yeah, that's the ordinance done. Um, next, I'm gonna move this to the side and then we're gonna start working on those resin seats. So let me kind of clear this off the desk and we'll pull the seats out and work on those. Okay, so my resin seats arrived and we can go ahead and do this. So I'm gonna show you how I get off the resin block seats, um, which is pretty straightforward. So I'm using these guys, the Squadron 2 details, GIU 7s, and it's 48408. Um, for the pair here. These look really nice. They have the seat belts molded in, which I like for painting. I like it molded rather than the photo etch, to be honest with you. Um, now, obviously, Squadron went bankrupt um, earlier this year, so I'm not sure how many of these are around or if you can still get them, that kind of stuff. So just be aware of mine. But any GRU 7 seat, resin seats, are pretty much going to work. So that's the seats. Um, what we're going to use to cut it. Oh, excuse my reach across. So looks like I'm about to do some organ, organ harvesting, but these guys, Zonosaurs. Now these are only like five dollars, which blows my mind because wood handles. I mean, they're really good quality. Um, Zona, Z O N A or Z O O N A, depending on where you're in the world. Um, this one's losing its sharpness a little bit. I think this is like a medium fine. This is a very fine. Um, this is usually actually a little small, to be honest with you. Um, you can also use the old um, C M K razor saws too. Um, these kind of snap easily if you bend them to so keep them straight. Um, so these work perfectly good, but. I generally use this big boy right here. So again, I'm not going to harvest organs. I'm just going to cut the block off. So that's what we're going to use. I probably, if I buy one again, I'd probably go, that's a medium fine. I think I'll probably go like a medium um, for this probably. Um, health and safety wise, I have a wet paper towel to catch all the resin dust. Um, resin is toxic. It's like asbestos in terms of getting in your lungs and causing issues. So it's always helpful to have, or you should have a mask as well as so you don't inhale on this stuff. Now we're in, now I know we're in kind of a couple of little blocks off, but again, health and safety. I'm using my 3M mask, which I use for spraying, and I have the brown 6006 filters for the um, paint, paint-wise, and I have the um, particulate filters on the outside too. So this helps with all the resin, stop getting resin dust in your lungs. So that is pretty much the setup here. So let me just get my mask on of my head here. So let me just take these out. I'm not actually opened the black packet yet, so let's kind of see what we're going on in the box. And also, they can be both the same. Yep, identical. Sorry, let's take a look myself. You see, really nicely detailed. You don't really get that kind of detail with um, plastic. So, canopy masks and resin seats are almost pretty much a um, go to for me, any kit. So, two, so obviously both the same. So, let's go ahead and cut it off. So, this block here is just a, you need to cut off, it's just the, um, the way it's come out of the mold. So, I'm just going to I've got an old cutting mat here, so this is an old one, so I don't mind if I cut cut into this. Or you can use a piece of wood or something. Put my mask on. And then, uh, just gonna put it down. Put my saw. Oh. Is that done? Uh, let me do the other one. Done. So see how easy that. Is? Took my mask. So see how easy that with the saw just cuts right through it. Um, if you try to sand this stuff, oh, it's going to take forever. And use burn up all your sanding sticks. Excuse me, I've got my mask on here. Um, it's going to burn up all your sanding sticks. So. Yeah, this is just junk, goes in the trash can. Oh, okay, my camera. And then, sorry, mask will load me. Um, so then resin dust, I'm just gonna wipe up this white paper towel. Source. Good, so now I'm just gonna sand this, these little bit of sanding. So I'm gonna use a coarse sanding stick, which in this case will be a Flory Models white stick. And the harsher side, I'm gonna sand it off, put my mask back on. I 
and there you go. So that's it. Um, so what I'm going to do is now I'm going to run this over the, under the sink just to wash off all the dust and let air dry um, for a couple of hours. Then I'm going to, well, firstly I'm actually going to put it in the cockpit, make sure it fits, make sure make sure the height's okay. For some reason it's too high and the canopy doesn't fit, it might need sanding a little bit more off. So I'll just check the fit in the cockpit and that's fine. I'll just rinse it under water, let it air dry, and then we can get it um, primed and painted. What I'd like to use is I use kind of like bottle tops, like, well, this is, for example, a blue tack, and I just stick it on and then easy to spray. Just hold it and spray it, prime it and stuff. So what I need to do is I'll clean this dust away with these guys. I just run those and these are waterproof, so I just wash them under the sink, all the dust off, and then good to go again. So that's that one done. Let me go ahead and um, get this one done. We'll test fit it, get them washed, and then we'll come back and talk about painting. Okay, as you can see, we're zoomed in pretty heavily here, but we painted the seats with the black. Um, we're actually prime, should I say. So I use my usual Mr. Surface of 1500 black. Um, which I love, and I love the finish on this too. So the seats frames are actually, the main bulk of the seat is actually black. And um, so this finish is perfect. I don't need to paint it anymore in terms of black. So if I just kind of move those out of the way and bring the instructions in, you can see it does have call outs here and tell me to paint. So I kind of jotted in my scribbly handwriting here, mostly greens and the seat cushion is buff. Although looking at reference pictures, it's a little bit darker than buff. So. Tamiya paints aren't the best to hand paint at all. Um, they're great for airbrushing. Even with a little bit of retarded, it can be a little tricky to hand paint. So I do use model color acrylic paints, Vallejo, to um, hand paint anything. So it makes it so much easier. So I'm going to get my paints out and um, I'll get painting with some of these things, paint the details on the seats, and we'll come back. Um, oh, one thing to note too is for anyone who can use the hand paint, hand painting, it's you think the smaller brushes are probably easier to, to use, but it's actually not the case. Um, a bigger brush actually makes detail painting a lot easier. You can carry, carry more paint on the brush. So my kind of favorite I've used for a long time now is just this really cheap brush. But this is a MIG ammo, or you can get the AK ones, the synthetic size one. Size one brushes are really the best to go for hand painting, um, and even tiny to details. Um, these have really good points. Um, I said I've used this pretty solidly for over a year, and it's still really good, and it's not like a $3 brush. I do have my Winsor & Newton Series 7. I damn touched them. <laughs> the expensive brushes, they're still in the boxes. Excuse me. So, yeah, I just stick with these guys. I love these size ones, my sweet spot. Um, for hand painting anything. So, yeah, so enough waffling there. So let me go ahead and get the hand painting done and we'll come back and see how it looks. Okay, so we painted them up. Basic colors. There we go. Not too much going on there. Um, one thing to notice, this is really good for um, hand painting with acrylics too, this, this like porcelain palette. So I got this, I think maybe on Amazon or somewhere like that, or an art shop for about $5 or something, more very expensive, but the great, oh, to be upside down spilling everything. But the, the great thing is though, because the acrylics, when I'm done, I just put this under the sink and wash it and it all wipes, wipes right off, or with a paper towel or something. So um, yeah, really good. Um, obviously I have wet palettes and stuff too, but just for quick little painting things, these are really good, these porcelain palettes. So what I'm going to do is, as you can see here, it's a little bit kind of plain. So pop, pop out the details with a little bit of dry brushing. So dry brushing 101, I like to use model color for my hand painting, even though it's an airbrush, it hand paints beautifully. This is 41062, which is aluminum or aluminium. Actually, I have some right here in the palette already. So I'm just going to take a flat brush. This is a Roseman Company Series 7, 6, 8, number 4, size 4. So I'm going to put some paint on my brush and then wipe it all off. On a paper towel. And then lightly brush the side. Go through. Do this whole one, and what it does is it picks out all the raised detail. Kind of makes it pop a little bit better. So let's kind of zoom in a little bit on this. That's the one I've done. See how it kind of picks out all the detail? And this is the one I've not done. So I've not done and done. See how it just kind of picks it out? These are tiny. See if it gets my thumbnail how small this thing is. So 
it's going to be pretty hard to kind of see. But let me go ahead and just do the other one real quick. So just some paint, knock it off the brush, and then just rub all over the race detail. Hey guys, I'm back. So sorry about that. The camera died. So um, yeah, so all I did was just quit the change the battery, and I'm just back, and I just quickly um, finished dry brushing these guys. Took like two minutes um, with that that um, model air aluminum paint. So all I'm gonna do now is add a quick wash to the C pads, just give it a little bit of texture and um, pull out some detail. Now, follows my channel will know I'm a big fan of the Sistel washes. This is Agraph Earth, Earth Shade, which is a brown, and then they have all these crazy kind of. Um, color names and then no one always black they're the other two that's the two really good ones when you note with these lids too is make sure you always push back to seal it because if I kind of open it and then I close it like I normally do see as our air gets in so they dry out so you'll make sure you click it back and that's how the secrets of these so anyway so super easy all I'm gonna do is stick my brush in there and this is acrylic based washes off with water no problem and I'm just gonna dab some onto the seat cushions And actually looking at these, they don't have much in terms of um, texture actually on the resin, so it's not really much to pull, but anyway, help darken them up a little bit, add a little weathering and grime over the straps as well. Sorry, I can do this off camera. So that's it. Again, the tiny seat size on the thumbnail, you're not going to see much on the camera, unfortunately, with 48 scale seats, but they will make a difference in, this, in the cockpit. So that's done. So what I'm going to do now is looking at the instructions. It comes with some couple of decals for the um, top of the head box. So I'm just going to dig those out, put the decals on, and we'll get them in the jet. And that kind of wraps up this part. So we've gone through the ordnance and we've gone through the seat. And um, yeah, we're pretty much done. So I'm going to wrap it up now. Um, come back next week for the next part. Next Friday, as always, it'll go up um, every Friday. And I believe it's going to be about nine parts of this video build series. So hopefully you found some interesting stuff in here. Um, if so, please feel free to leave a comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff, and I'll see you next week. So have a good one. See ya. Bye-bye.